The affair between Eddie Fisher and Elizabeth Taylor in the late 50s was one of the biggest scandals to rock Hollywood's golden era. As America's sweetheart, Debbie Reynolds had the world's sympathy when her husband left her for her friend Taylor. Overnight, Reynolds became the virtuous victim, Fisher the villain, and Taylor the homewrecker in the narrative constructed by the media's moral outrage. But join Factsverse as we re-examine the affair told through Todd Fisher's eyes for a more nuanced understanding. The Golden Years and the Formation of a Love Triangle In the mid-50s, Debbie Reynolds, Eddie Fisher, and Elizabeth Taylor were among the stars that shined the brightest. Early in that decade, two rising stars crossed paths while bringing entertainment to American soldiers overseas amid the Korean War. Debbie Reynolds and singer Eddie Fisher. With his chart-topping, crooning voice, Fisher had become a bona fide teen idol, churning out hits like Thinking of You that catapulted him to the top of the music world. Meanwhile, Reynolds was lighting up the silver screen, having recently starred in the hugely popular musical Singing in the Rain. Despite achieving fame in different realms, romance bloomed between the two performers. Their evident chemistry quickly led to marriage in 1955. Before her marriage to Fisher, Reynolds had already formed a friendship with Elizabeth Taylor. Both were contracted through MGM Studios, and as Reynolds recalled, they went to school together on the lot when Taylor was in between films. Taylor was already a star by then, and Reynolds admitted to being in awe of her. This friendship not only endured, but also strengthened after Reynolds' marriage to Fisher. In 1956, a year after their marriage, Reynolds and Fisher welcomed their first child, Carrie Fisher, who later gained her own fame as a writer and actress, most notably in the Star Wars franchise. The birth of their daughter seemed to solidify their status as America's sweethearts. Two years later, in 1958, Reynolds gave birth to a son, Todd. The name wasn't chosen at random. It was a tribute to their close friendship with Elizabeth Taylor and her then-husband, film producer Mike Todd. The two couples, Reynolds and Fisher, Taylor and Mike Todd, were often photographed together, epitomizing Hollywood friendship. When Taylor married Mike Todd in 1957, Fisher served as best man, and Reynolds was the matron of honor. The bond seemed so strong it was almost familial. But this idyllic picture was soon shattered. In 1958, just four weeks after the birth of Todd Fisher, Mike Todd was killed in a plane crash. This tragedy served as the catalyst for a series of events that not only dissolved marriages, but also broke up friendships. The Affair Unveiled – A Son's Perspective While much has been said about the affair from various perspectives, it's the voice of Todd Fisher, the couple's son, that provides a deeply personal and nuanced understanding of the emotional toll it took on his mother, Debbie. Todd recounts in his memoir, My Girls, A Lifetime with Carrie and Debbie, that his mother encouraged Eddie Fisher to comfort Elizabeth Taylor during her time of grief. It was during this period of emotional vulnerability that Fisher and Taylor's affair began. Todd describes the heart-wrenching moment when his mother discovered the affair. Debbie, missing her husband while he was out on tour, decided to call Elizabeth Taylor's hotel room to catch up. To her shock, it was Eddie who answered the phone. The realization was immediate and devastating. Quote, Suddenly, a lot of things clicked into place, Debbie Reynolds later recounted. She could hear Elizabeth Taylor's voice in the background confirming her worst fears. The affair was not just a public scandal. It was a deeply personal betrayal that shattered Debbie Reynolds. Todd Fisher writes about how his mother was the last to know about the affair, despite hints in the papers and whispers among friends. When she finally faced the truth, it left her emotionally shattered, a term she used herself to describe her state of mind. Despite the emotional turmoil, Debbie showed remarkable resilience. Todd notes that his mother managed to largely avoid media contact as the controversy unfolded, focusing instead on her work and raising her two children, Carrie and Todd. She was globally embraced with love and sympathy, becoming the good girl, an innocent, unsuspecting victim in the eyes of the public. The Media Frenzy and Public Perception The media played a pivotal role in shaping public perception, casting each of the three main characters, Debbie, Eddie, and Elizabeth, in roles that stuck with them for years. Tabloids pounced on the story. Headlines screamed about betrayal, the broken home, and the homewrecker Elizabeth Taylor. Todd recounts how the media were quick to vilify both his father and Taylor, 
Fisher was labeled a philandering, opportunistic loser, and Taylor was branded a bad girl, home-rucking slut. The media's portrayal was heavily influenced by the gender norms and moral codes of the time. Eddie's infidelity was seen as a betrayal not just of his wife, but of the American family ideal. Elizabeth Taylor, already on her fourth marriage, was portrayed as the seductress, who led Fisher astray. In contrast, Debbie was cast as the innocent victim, a portrayal Todd notes was globally embraced with love and sympathy. The media frenzy had tangible impacts on the careers of all three stars, but perhaps none more so than Eddie Fisher. According to Todd, his father had contracts canceled due to morality clauses, effectively ruining his career. Elizabeth Taylor faced some public judgment, but continued to thrive in her career. Debbie Reynolds, on the other hand, managed to turn public sympathy into a revitalized career, receiving new film offers and even a nomination for an Academy Award. What's perhaps most striking is the lasting impact of the media's narrative. Todd points out that the labels attached to his parents and Taylor persisted for years, affecting not just public perception, but also personal relationships. The media's role in shaping this narrative was so powerful, it became almost inseparable from the truth. The Emotional Toll and Guilt Factor The affair was not just a public scandal, it was also a deeply personal betrayal. Debbie Reynolds was a devout Christian, and her faith played a significant role in how she navigated the complexities of her marriage and the ensuing affair. According to Todd, his mother had strong religious beliefs against divorce. She had been a virgin when she married Eddie and believed in the sanctity of marriage. Eddie and Elizabeth, aware of Reynolds' religious convictions, exerted considerable pressure on her to grant a divorce. They framed their affair as true love and argued that she was standing in the way of their happiness. Todd Fisher recounts how this guilt-tripping was a calculated move to manipulate his mother into agreeing to a divorce that she was morally opposed to. Eventually, she relented, telling Eddie to go. The divorce was finalized in 1959, and Fisher married Taylor that same day. Reconciliation and Reflection One of the most remarkable aspects of this complex narrative is the eventual reconciliation between Debbie and Elizabeth. Years had passed since the affair, and both had moved on to new chapters in their lives. According to Todd, the ice between the two women began to break during a chance encounter on a cruise ship. Reynolds sent a note to Taylor's room, suggesting they finally talk. Taylor agreed, and the two met, leading to a conversation that Reynolds later described as healing. It was deeply significant on an emotional level for both women. Todd writes that his mother viewed the reconciliation as a form of closure. For Elizabeth, it was an opportunity to make amends and find forgiveness. The reconciliation became public when Debbie and Elizabeth acted together in the 2001 TV movie These Old Broads, written by Reynolds' daughter, Carrie Fisher. According to Todd, both women recognized life was too short to hold grudges, especially as they entered the later stages of their lives. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your thoughts on this crazy story? Let us know in the comments section below.